Well, we're looking at another study in 1 Peter, and we're getting into chapter 2. And at the heart of this study, and, and uh, certainly chapter 1 and 2, is holiness, the question of holiness, what it means to be holy, what it means to be God's holy people in the setting that we're in. And we see this in chapter 1, and we're seeing it uh, continuing to chapter 2. And that's really going to be my theme, that's how I'm going to look at it, uh, to be a holy people. And we're going to look at the Bible passage again, we're going to uh, consider it and break it up and then ask a few questions. And so that's my, my theme again uh, today. Now here we are in 2 Peter, and uh, let me show you how holiness uh, continues to play such a part. Uh, first of all, it's this whole section here of, of uh, what you rid yourself of. These are things that are considered unholy right these are considered unholy uh, but we're told that we're being created and made into a holy priesthood you can see that there we're being made into uh, furthermore uh, a holy nation you see that in verse 9 so holiness is still very important in this passage it's a, an important concept it sits at the heart of everything that's being said and done here uh, by Peter. And it's everything that, that God does. So we're, we're holy. holy. So that's, that's the main theme. Having said that, let me break this passage up a little bit. So first of all, I'm going to look at holy growth. That's going to be this first section. Holy growth. And then we're going to look at a holy community, which is, uh, which is a mix of sections here. And then we're going to look at holy foundations. So first of all then, simply, holy growth. Holy growth. In order to grow as one who has been given an imperishable seed, we see that at the end of chapter 1. Uh, we have to do two things. First of all, we have to get rid. Get rid. Uh, so in order to grow, you have to clear the ground, you have to clear the land. Uh, we're thinking a little bit about uh, what it's like in a garden if you want to grow something in your garden. And the first thing you want to do is you have to go in and you have to clear the ground. Within agriculture and farming, that involves going in and getting rid of all the stones that are in the ground. Uh, it, it involves going in and taking a plough in and turning over and getting rid of all the, all the old plants. Sometimes you'd have to uh, put a weed killer on, but you'd have to get rid. In order to have a good crop, there are things that would hinder that good crop that you need to remove. Now, uh, Peter mentions them here, and he mentions a few things that would hinder holiness first of all malice that's a, 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 a an angry a, a disposition that is that is uh, evil violent aggressive unspiritual and then there's deceit and that's hidden that's the hidden things malice can be open but deceit is generally starts off hidden and it, it wants to remain hidden hypocrisy is a two-facedness um that 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 thing within us that says well i'm okay but you should do not what i do but what i want you to do and this this kind of hypocrisy and we are hip hypocrite hunters aren't we we look for hypocrisy envy and that is desiring what god has not given us uh, what God has not granted us, we become envious. And then there's slander of every kind. That's uh, to speak untruths about someone or something. So those have to be removed. These, interesting what Peter considers key things that have to be rid of. And they're all to do with the heart and self and pride. They're all the things that are at the heart of a proud person. Now, having got rid of those, 
you have to, interestingly, crave. I, I quite like this, crave. Uh, to desire, to, to want, to feel the great need for, crave, pure spiritual milk. Now, he doesn't give us a list of this. Hmm, that's interesting. He doesn't give us a list of pure spiritual milk. But he does give us an insight into what it is. Because he tells us that we have tasted the Lord's goodness. Hmm? We've tasted the Lord's goodness. So pure spiritual milk is anything that is associated with the goodness of God, the goodness of the Lord. And uh, we suddenly open up into a, a huge realm of blessings that we are to crave, things that come from the Lord. Now, if we do that, we will grow up in our salvation. So this stunts growth. This stunts growth. And this causes growth. So one stunts growth and one causes growth. So when you meet someone who says they're a Christian and they don't have growth and life, you need to ask, what are they feeding on? That may be a question we have to ask ourselves. Now, we're going to pause and have a little think about holy growth. And these elements, we have to rid ourselves of what is corrupting. Maybe we need to ask ourselves those questions. And at the heart, remember, is pride. And we have to crave pure spiritual milk, which is to taste the goodness of the Lord. Now, how do we do these things? What we find is that what we ultimately desire affects our growth. And so what do we desire? And how do we fulfill those desires? So I'm going to pause there and uh, for a bit of thought around these themes. Now, having considered what hinders or enables and enhances growth is uh, the second question, where does that growth take place? Now, I'm going to argue that holiness, as far as Peter is concerned, holiness takes place in community. Let me give you some examples. Here we're being built, first of all, as you come Chosen and precious, verse 4. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. A royal priesthood. Further on, he goes on to say that you're a holy nation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a people of God. A special possession. And there's the people of God. You are now so holiness takes place in community. That's clear to Peter. Holiness is a community endeavor, a spiritual house, a, a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people. You were once not a people, but now you are a people. And so the, the, the bed, the seed bed on which we grow, again, think of the garden. And you want to plant something and you want it to grow. And you have to ask yourself, where does this grow? And for a Christian, this growth takes place in community with others around them. This is the, the, the key to uh, how community grows. I was a uh, confronted by someone a few years ago who was of the opinion that what I was doing was wrong. That's not an unusual thing for me. And at his heart he said, you know, churches will only grow if you do one-to-one. -one. You've got to do one-to-one. -one. And he gave me a book about how important uh, and vital one-to-one -one discipleship is. And I agree. 
one-to-one -one discipleship is important. But Christians grow not in couples, but in community. Just like we say, it takes a village to bring up a child. It takes a community to bring up a Christian. And so the place where uh, holiness is developed is in community. There was a thought, and historically there's been a thought, that holiness is developed by yourself. Go off onto some mountain or up onto the top of some pole or, or into some secluded place, and that's where real holiness and if you want to be holy, you've got to separate yourself from everyone and just sit and meditate. And, and this is a, a theme that you often find uh, in the non-Christian world as well, that holy people are often isolated people and they sit on their own. But as far as Peter, as far as God is concerned, who's inspiring this and the Holy Spirit, growth takes place in community. That's why the sins against community are, are, are so, so, so bad, you know. Rid yourself, malice and greed and envy and hypocrisy and slander. These are community sins. These are sins against other human beings. And so Peter says, you've got to get rid of them. And now, having got rid of them, then you're able to, to grow. There's a, a, a great theme here, isn't there, uh, about as we think about growing in community, a spiritual house, you know, a building, a priesthood, servants. You think about that, a holy nation, a people. And you think about all those wonderful themes that you see here about growing together. And so as we, as we speak and as we study our Bibles, we study our Bibles. It's good if we can study our Bibles and speak together and study together. And, and this is one of the, the things about uh, how we meet and how we use our time together and Zoom and things like that. And how we encourage Christians to meet together and to speak together and to spend time and to serve together and uh, this is where holiness takes place it is here in community that we rub up against each other and we are challenged in our thoughts and in our desires and in our ways now we're going to have a little pause and think about some of these them things these themes at the heart of holiness is community a, a spiritual house where God dwells, a royal priesthood where sacrifices are made, a chosen people and a nation where there are a group of people who identify together as a people of God. So my question is very simple. Our world is very selfish. It's about me and myself. And how does that selfish outlook affect us and how do we counteract that? And that's the question I think we, we really have to wrestle with. Now, lastly, in this little passage of scripture, we come to what we build our foundations on. What is the foundation that we build upon? And, and at this point, uh, the agricultural theme seems to go out the window and it's now about a house. Uh, maybe about a a um, a community as well, you know, you, the founder the founders of a community, but the founders certainly of of a house. So the third one is the the uh, foundations, the holy foundations. Uh, what are the holy foundations? Well, we're told that we offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. That's a great theme, but they can only be done through Christ Jesus. So the foundation is for service is Christ Jesus. The foundation for community is Christ Jesus. And so we say he lays a stone in Zion. So that's a spiritual city, a foundation city. 
a cornerstone. To him he is chosen and precious, and those who trust in him are not put to shame. This stone is precious. So the foundation stone of this new community, of this new nation, is Jesus Christ. And so the foundation of their holiness, or and of our holiness, of our being right with God, of us being separate to God. You know, we can see that very clearly in this theme, that we are God's special possession. We are separate to God. And we are now his people, the people of God. The foundation for our service and who we are is Jesus Christ. Other people have rejected him. That becomes clear. The builders have rejected him. I don't know who the builders are, but they've rejected him. The builders of Israel, the builders of general society, they've rejected him. But he is the cornerstone. He is the cornerstone. He's the one that causes some people to stumble and to fall. Now we see this again in our society. That people have rejected Jesus Christ and the result is that they stumble and they fall. But for a Christian, he is the chief cornerstone. And so the, the growth is spiritual. The community is the bed, the place where growth takes place and the foundation is Jesus Christ. The good ground, I suppose we could say good ground, couldn't we? The good ground is Jesus Christ, the, the ground in, upon which we grow, the foundation upon which we grow, the one who, who nourishes us. Yeah, that would be a good theme, wouldn't it, I suppose? The one who nourishes us is Jesus Christ. He is the one who feeds us. We have tasted and seen that he is good. And so we're able to praise him and to live as community only on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Now let's quickly, as we come to the end of this study, uh, have a look at this, this great theme. Not only are we to live in community, but lastly, the foundation is Jesus Christ. And that's the one that God has laid, the foundation, the only way that we'll be holy, the only way we'll be his people, the only way we'll be able to serve is because of Jesus Christ. Chosen by God, rejected by, by people. That makes, Peter makes that clear. But praised by those who are called out of darkness. Now, here are the questions. In what way do we build upon the foundation that is Jesus Christ? What other foundations are there? We'll ponder on these things. In this passage, Peter takes us to a, a living vibrant foundation in Christ community, to a serving community, to a worshipping community. And he challenges us again, let's remember right at the very beginning, the hindrance to any growth is selfishness and sin. And the help to every growth is that we have tasted and we feed on the spiritual life and milk that is given by God, which is Jesus Christ. And for a Christian, you say, I've tasted and I want more. And this is a lovely passage, one well worth our consideration. I commend it to you. Let me pray. Lord, help us to understand the principles here uh, laid down by Peter. May we feed upon you and your goodness. May we crave you. May we want to know you more, to love you more, to trust you more. In Jesus' name. Amen.